This is Professor Michael Chapman. I'm one of the most experienced IVF doctors in Australia. I believe that an important part that I can contribute is to educate patients in relation to fertility, infertility and all that that involves. These series of podcasts help to educate you. I hope they are helpful to you. If you wish to know more, however, I'm more than happy to have you contact me via email, which is profmchapman at gmail.com or make an appointment to see me on 91384222 What are the long-term health conditions around children born via IVF procedures both in terms of general health outcomes and mental and developmental outcomes Okay When we started doing so let's talk about outcomes of let's talk about outcomes of IVF for the children when the first pregnancies happened in the late 70s, early 80s, we as clinicians were terrified we were producing something that was unnatural and therefore potentially going to have long-term impacts on those children. We were doing things, the hormone stimulation, the putting the creation of embryos in a laboratory not in a natural state. Would that produce abnormalities that would make this technology not safe? And it's the main reason why Australia led the world in actually having the first baby register for IVF babies back in 1982. And what over the years it has shown quite conclusively that IVF babies in the vast majority of cases are no different to the general population in terms of any of the parameters that are looked at. And they've all been looked at. IVF children have been the most studied group of children in the last 100 years because people were concerned. When we, when we look at abnormalities, there, are, there is data suggest there are very mild, slight increases, like one in a thousand of urogenital abnormalities, the urogenital tract. But when we think that we're treating men with abnormalities of their sperm, it's not totally surprising there might be something in that. Other than that, in terms of mental disorders, again, big studies now with children that were born from IVF now in their 20s and even 30s, the data is very positive. It's almost the other way around. The children born through IVF appear to be uh, more intelligent and more mentally adjusted than their peers. Now, there's factors that might influence that because generally IVF has been done in the higher socioeconomic classes because it costs money. And also, they're obviously very wanted children. That's why they, they, why they, why their parents went through what they did. They're not children that went, oh, oh damn, I'm pregnant again and, and be part of a, a large cohort of potentially not so wanted children. So it's not totally surprising that that side of it has been obviously covered. In terms of long-term health risks, there were some early studies suggesting that teenagers might have higher blood pressures than their peers, but as we get into their 20s and 30s, that just that, that change has not persisted. There's a massive study out of Western Australia where they followed over a 1,000 children from IBF from the 1990s when technology wasn't as good as it is today, I'd have to say. Culture mediums were not as good as today. Success rates were lower. And in that big study, comparing them with with other children, it's all been incredibly reassuring that we're not doing any harm by doing IVF. So parents going into an IVF cycle can be reassured that that any risk is very low. And 99.9% of those slight increases are things that are correctable. Um, we are very positive about our baby outcomes. And don't forget that you can access all the previous episodes by going to our website, www.theivfjourney.com and select IVF Journey Podcast from the navigation menu.